as promised at the beginning of the video, we now want to look at uh, seabedding in two and three bed pots and the respective pot odds that you're either getting or giving, as well as the so-called push calculator, the EV expected value push calculator. And we'll also look at a couple of example hands here with poker stove, as always. So, first scenario, we've got here, you guys know these calculators, of course, um, from the series on Poker Math. And if you don't know those, <laughs> this is, for example, one calculator together. This is the steel calculator that we reviewed also in the first video. And this here is your general pot odds calculator. Um, if you don't know those, definitely review the respective videos in the Poker Math series, or sub-series here. What we've got in this situation is, and you can see the field here, we've got a half half bet, so-called small blind, big blind post, open raiser for four, one cold caller, and the hero then over cold calls. Let's say, for example, again with 10 jack suited. <laughs> so, he is, let's quickly look at the odds that he's getting for his cold call as such. He's getting four to the nine and a half, basically two to one, and he needs 29% equity to break even in the long run, 31% including the red pot, and as we just had, guys, believe, yeah, this would be our table. That would work as a limp, <laughs> or an over limp, say, for two to one, um, giving you a probability of hitting of 36%. And as an over cold call, if you think one of these guys is going to bet into you at 60%, then you really need basically 6 to 1 odds. And yeah, again, that's 14%. And that's just really, really, really close. So again, that's marginal. But when you hit, you do have position and you get a lot of. Yeah, a lot of options at your disposal post slop. So that would be just calling it or over calling it cold. And again, you need to hit that flop 29% of the time to break even in the long run. If again, if you're going to go all in or to hit that playable flop. So let's say you do call it. Flop comes, and lo and behold, the 60% C better does make his standard. C bet of two thirds pot size, which is nine. So it was a moment. Yeah, there we go. Uh, 950. You call the four, so again 1350. And yeah, that was a pre flop pot. 1350, and then he bets two, two thirds that more or less for nine. And that's what that looks like. So total pot when it gets to you, so pre-flop raiser, C bets to nine, cold caller one fold, and now the pot is 2250 to your call of nine, and you need at this point odds of 28 or 29 percent to make that call, 30 percent with the rake. For a one card draw, if you're on an eight outer or even a nine outer, say you're on the flush draw and you think the jack high flush draw is going to be good, you've only got 19% uh, probability of hitting that on the next card. When you then push over the top, your remaining effective stack is 96. So at this point, you could, of course, come over the top for your entire stack, or you could just re-raise. Uh, but when you do push, as we've set up this calculator, your villain is going to have, uh, he's going to need 42% equity to make that call and break even in the long run. And if you if you go ahead and push that, you're going to have, I mean, with the flush draw alone, if you think that's good enough, you're going to have 35% equity alone just for the flush draw. If you push and he does call, this is the respective pot size, uh, with one all in and one villain calling at 205 minus the rake of $3 for 20250, you're going to need, at that point, 47% equity to break even in the long run when your opponent never folds. That's scenario one. <laughs> you are versus, uh, you're, uh, you're facing 
a preflop aggressor, you over cold call. He makes a standard C bet, and that's the breakdown as follows. Scenario two. Open razor to four. You cold call in middle position, which is, again, guys, really a good idea without a really strong holding if you are playing good players who are to the left of you or behind you because they can do exactly this. And as many of you astute guys will have already recognized, that is a squeeze. So open razor, cold caller. This guy raises it up, textbook size, 3-bet squeeze to 3 times the initial raiser plus 1 per cold caller for 16, giving the next guy a call question of $12. So his call is 12. He does make that call, and all of a sudden, you're on. So you haven't made that call yet. But this is what the pot looks like at 37.50 to your $12 call on your remaining stack. If you're playing big stack, is 96 because you, of course, made that initial cold call. To make that $12 call, you need you're getting basically three to one odds, so you need 24% equity to break even in the long run. Okay. Um, again, the probability of hitting playable flop is defined as such is 36%. Basically, 1.75 against. I always just think pretty much 2 to 1, whatever. Uh, when non suited, uh, pretty much 4 and 5 to 1. And again, as we had mentioned earlier, the likelihood of C bets when you're in squeeze situations is incredibly high. And you probably are looking at something like this, needing more or less 11 to 1 pot odds to make that call. <laughs> and only, by the way, break even in the long run. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm trying to reiterate this over and over again because this cold call call the squeeze is very often difficult. You're playing in middle, I mean, you're sandwiched on every single street post flop, and there's just a high likelihood of both the initial razor and you check that the three bet squeezer is going to just pop it, you know, eight times in ten for sure. So let's say you go, you go ahead and call for twelve. And the total pot at that point is going to be 49.50. When the initial open raiser checks, you check, and the three better, i.e. squeezer, then makes his uh, c-bet move on the flop like it's going to do almost always. The, fl uh, the pot is then including his two-thirds c-bet, 82.50, and your call is in 33%. Look at how that works out. I've created a table for you guys, for those of you who are a bit unfamiliar with um, yeah, proper pot size betting and um, two-thirds half pot size betting, stuff like that. What you can do is basically enter into the pot size here, whatever that is at, at your move. Let's say you were the three-bet squeezer, and you want to make now a proper two-thirds C-bet on the flop. You're like, okay, well, it's 50 bucks. What is exactly two-thirds? I'm not sure. You just enter in the percentage here, and that'll give you the amount that you should bet in order to bet that amount of the pot. That gives uh, the following breakdown. You need, if you're banking on these two guys folding, you need them to do so 40% of the time to break even. That's a so-called fold equity here in red. And in blue, these are the respective um, pot odds that your guys are getting, your opponents are getting, initially here and then after that guy calls what the player in the middle would then have to overcall that uh, C bet on the flop and that's pretty pretty straightforward um, good so your move pots now 8250 C bet came from the squeezer for 33 the open raise of preflop folds and again, it's on you for 33 into an 82.50 pot. So you're getting 2.5 to 1 odds, as you always will, when somebody makes a two-third pot size raise. And you need, lo and behold, 28.57% <laughs> equity to break even in the long run. Fantastic. Your effective stack is 84. So you don't only have the option to call. You also have the option, of course, to raise. And in this case, as your stack, 
is equal to or almost equal to the pot size, total pot size at that point. This isn't a normal you wouldn't just go betting 50 say for example here. That's a push situation and you push all in. So when you do so, your villain, your opponent, the three bet squeezer, only needs 23% equity to break even in the long run. You yourself, when you push and he does call, need with the rake 39% to break even in the long run. That brings us to this scenario down here. Of course, this is all this is all explained in the poker math videos that you should definitely have a look at again. But here briefly, I'll just enter that for you guys and show you how that breaks down, how you can use that in play. This is also important information for for you guys as we move into the third video of this sub-series where I'm going to be going through simply numerous example hands to really bring all this theoretical knowledge um, into a presentable, very practical form and show you how you can then implement all this theory in your play. Uh, so if this is a bit too abstract at this point, um, my apologies, don't worry, in the third video we're going to get very practical with very concrete example hands and um, basically work through almost all these concepts one by one. Good, so our push calculator, we've got a total pot of 82 and we're on the flop, so our effective stack is 84 and we haven't posted anything, we haven't bet on that street as, as such. So we haven't invested any blinds or bets at that point. So we've got the full effective stack. The dead money is essentially uh, the pot minus his, um, yeah, minus his bet there. And we think if, let's say, for example, we're on the ace king, and we don't have a flush draw, and we're just basically on a on a six outer. The likelihood of hitting either the ace or the king in two cards to come is 24%. If our opponent never folds to our push, we're going to be losing 32 bucks in the long run. If he folds, let's say, one-fourth of his range, a little more than one-fourth of his range, at 28, let's call it 29%, to our push, we're just getting in the green for positive expected value. If we think he's going to fold half of that, again, he only needs 23% to make that call, so if he's a good player, that's not so likely. Let's say he only folds, let's say he does fold half of that range, then we're getting into decent returns, but that's, again, very, very likely when he's getting such good odds to make that call. He himself, if he's on the ace-king, for example, has that here. All right, and you guys can play with this as you like. Let's say we we do have instead of the jack ten suited as we just mentioned, we have the ace king suited. So we think we're on a full fifteen out draw. We put him on queens, jack something like that, and we think that every king, every ace, and every flush card is going to be good. Then for fifteen outs, uh, we're probably going to be something like fifty four percent. And here, even if he's never folding, we're already in. The green area for making that strong monster draw push on the flop. So this is um, the theoretical background to a lot of the situations that you're going to see in the coming video with the example hands.